Hello fellow bass players. Um, I've had several requests on my YouTube site to show how I go about learning a song. And uh, the first step is to pick a song that you want to learn, the okay? Then this, the second thing is, is make sure that your bass is in tune. Uh, it's in tune with itself. Now, it's very possible to pick a, a, a tune um, that's been recorded in the crack. It's not in, in a, any one key because it's especially older tunes. A lot of Beatle tunes, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, those kind of things have to be retuned sometimes. Um, for example, it's impossible to play through the entire Abbey Road album without retuning because Here Comes the Sun is for example, and, and, and it's in the crack. It's not the way the Beatles recorded it. It's not the way it was originally recorded. We're talking about master tapes that were physical, um, mechanical uh, machines in the day. And um, the post-production people, after the Beatles were in Bermuda, whatever they were doing, and these people came along and, and uh, re, you know made the masters and the pressings, um, didn't bother to uh, to make sure that all the tunes were lined up at A440, which is, is sort of the, sort of the standard uh, universal um, pitch for the, the note A vibrates at 440 seconds uh, uh, waves times. Now uh, let me see what was I going to say then. Um, Oh, they did, they didn't the, the post production people the Beatles nobody in you know the nineteen sixties or seventies thought that uh, people uh, in two thousand nineteen would be playing along with uh, these tunes so they didn't consider that aspect it's like they didn't they didn't think everybody would be wearing a blue uh, Baruch College uh, hoodie you know not that that matters and it doesn't. Uh, but the pitch didn't matter to them either in those days, what they were re releasing, not what they were playing yet, because this really had nothing to do with the musicians, and it never does. All right, so um, the tune that I selected today is is the Dixie Chicks tune. Uh, it's very, very well, a very nice tune. It's off of their, um, it's off of their. Um, um, uh, the Long Way Around album, and it's the first tune, Long Way Around. Um, in Nashville, uh, the upper echelon Nashville uh, recordings um, have their artists, of course, and they all, they're wonderful artists, and the musicians that back them up are not their bands that you'll see on the road uh, most of the time. Because these are studio musicians, just like back in the Frank Sinatra day, the big band day, or when they recorded uh, Mel Torme, big band, you know, these, these studio musicians didn't want to go on the road. They didn't want to uh, spend months on the road uh, for playing like two or three hours a night uh, at Tops. Uh, they, they, they could make a lot more money, be with their families, staying at home, close to the studio, driving in. And, um, and then laying everything down. These were very small um, group of guys that work together all the time. So uh, not to be critical, what you have in the Nashville going on right now, the past 15 years or so, are bands, that, uh, backing bands that sound like they're all the same guys. Um, just, just like back in the day when we had Motown, and we had the Wrecking, wrecking Crew and uh, the Funk Brothers. These guys, um, they, what was going on in Stacks, the whole thing. Um, so that, that's not to be critical. But if you, if you, if you go see some of these uh, bands uh, live, you're not going to more than likely see the musicians that recorded with them um, in the studio. So, um, so there's going to be a certain sameness and an approach to the sound by the producers because um, uh, the Dixie Chicks, for example, that whole scene, which is a typical thing going on, um, they would get together and so their songs were selected and they they're, they're the fine musicians and all that, but they had the backing people behind them that uh, had their own style and producers in the same studios and 
So, so basically you had the same color. So this tune, what, what key is this tune in the, the long way around? It's in the key of C. And um, I have always preached um, to avoid open strings, number one, um, uh, because it, it destroys certain patterns that you can otherwise see on the fingerboard. Get your fourth finger going. One finger, one fret is my, my philosophy. First finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. And there's no reason in the world not to do this. Um, now the electric bass is a, a lot smaller string length than the upright bass, and that's why the upright bass, I should say smaller, shorter, um, the upright bass, you had to do a different fingering pattern. One, two, and three, four always work together. So these old guys, they'd switch from electric to um, upright, and they would um, take the 3-4 idea with them, all right, um, to the electric bass, and there's no reason for it. Um, so um, start with a, getting a, a, a C major scale. Open strings now you could play there's different ways but by learning it with no open strings you just go up a fret etc etc get the pattern. That means you've got to make your pinky uh, and your third finger move separately, all right? And it's, it, takes it takes time. So within that uh, major chord, we're also going to, um, we're also going to do the arpeggio, which is, but that's within the framework work of the scale, all right? So um, the notes I'm gonna be using in this tune are, our C, C, D, E, F, G, A, E, C. Now what a lot of bass players don't want to do is go down from this primary central note. Now I am going to use the open string here with that. No, I'm not. I'm just like, use the fourth finger or that. And then you're going to move shift, one shift down for the F. Those are the notes we're going to be doing. All right. Now, 90% uh, of what we're going to be doing on this song. All right. Now, people have asked me about my bass. They ask about my sound. First of all, I'm sitting here next to a 45-year-old GBX amp. It's got two 15-inch speakers, which the size of the speaker really influences your sound. Um, um, that's all I can say about it. Uh, this is transistor. I mean, I wish I could have a big old tube head. But um, this is fine for now. This is my bass. Uh, it's a 1969 uh, Precision. And I have modified it in 1971 after seeing uh, Felix Papillardi play live. And uh, the only thing I did with it is put in the humbucker pickup. And there's a three-way switch, um, as you can see. And I can, I can have different combinations of both pickups or separately. So... Um, on any of these recordings, I don't use the, the humbucker at all. So please don't think that my sound is um, because I, because I uh, use the humbucker. I don't, not in any, in any of these uh, tunes. All right, my strings are flats. They're not rounds. There's a huge difference um, in sound. Uh, all I can tell you is that a, a, a flat wound is more close to the upright bass. Uh, it starts with an explosion. Let's just make up a term like a jigawam, right? It starts with like an explosion, um, and then it drops dead. All right. So that's let's say that that's uh, 50 jigawams. All right. Now a round wound will have 50 jigawams, but it, it's going to be spread out more horizontally and with a less of an attack. So you have less of a boom at the beginning. Um, uh, it's nothing to do with volume, it's got to do with the shape of the attack. Uh, so, uh, which I can't demonstrate because I don't have uh, upright, uh, uh, round wands, all right? So these are flats, right? that's the number two. 
Now, let's get to the song itself. Um, now, a lot of country western tunes are, um, if, if, if you want to call this country western, George Jones would be interested. I think it's kind of country rock myself. I think it's, this is a great, great tune. And the Dixie Chicks are tremendous. Uh, so it's in the key of C. Um, it's, uh, it's about four minutes long. How is the song constructed? Well, it's constructed like this glass, all right? This is the song, all right? And within the song, there are usually, or oftentimes, I'll say usually in, in country western, there is a, what's called the, the uh, head, and then within the, after the head is also the bridge, all right? Now the bridge is a different, uh, usually a smaller uh, part of the song, but it's also the most declamatory, sometimes called chorus, and that's where the real familiarity of the of the head um, of the tune comes along. And so you'll have a you'll have a, a verse, a, a bridge, and then a, a head, which repeat, uh, then the bridge, which repeats uh, throughout the song. And it'll go back to the verse again, and then it'll go back, whatever whatever it is. Now in this song. And uh, it's a bit unusual because after, it, there is one point, which I'll point out, where there's a little bridge uh, within, the, within the song itself, all right? Uh, and this only happens once. Um, there, are, there, is, there are several uh, uh, recording uh, songwriters that like to use this little bridge. It only happens once in a song where the cycle between the verse and the bridge uh, might happen three times as the song goes on with its uh, with its lyrics. All right, um, Cheryl Crow is another uh, one uh, is another one of these um, the people that oftentimes well will oftentimes have a little bridge and a big bridge. Um, the little bridge only happens once. The bridge bounces back and forth between the, the head and the bridge. All right. So now, uh, so we know we're going to be in the key of C. And I showed you the basic notes. Basic. Yep. You'll find I can't talk and play at the same time, among other things. But that's what we're going to worry about. So now let's listen to the tune. And we're gonna make sure you're in tune with the bass. All right. And this is this is how the song starts. And there it's now. The idea is not to try to imitate what the bass player in the studio did one day. You know, when they recorded this, um, because that's not the idea. You, you want to develop your own style, so let's listen. So we're going to we're going to start with the note C in a minute, but there's no basses in this because it's kind of introductory. Okay, here we go now. We're going to. Now we're going to go right to the bridge, and here's the bridge. Elements. Oh yeah, we've got the right notes done. I've done everything correct. We got the right notes. Everything's perfect. Well, you have to also consider the articulation, uh, long and short. Hear the difference? I'm going to play uh, these notes short. Now, uh, I, I I control a lot of my um, uh, length of the note with my left hand. You'll see it's coming off a lot of what my comes right off the fingerboard. Don't do this. That's not the idea. The idea is just to matter of fact, I think it's still probably touching the string. I really don't know. Um try to tell ask yourself how many steps you took in one hour between eleven and twelve yesterday. There's things you just have done. You don't realize 
how, you know, you don't, there's information that you really don't need. But in this case, we're talking about a technique. So watch how I, when I'm playing this song, I can add to it by, I'm not deadening it at all in this hand. That's all I'm doing. And that's a very important technique that, uh, that can be used. And then the other thing I also use is the active. Okay, now um, let's, start to, let's start again from the beginning. Let's see here. Well, maybe I shouldn't have, but whatever. Let's see what's going on here. Of course, that's going on. Let me see here. I'm using a CD player. In my day, in my day, I learned uh, with a needle and a and vinyl, and a lot of my original record collection is pretty chewed up. All right, so the bass plays, but now watch. I'm just gonna imitate. You're not playing here, but. Difference between long and short. Makes no sense to do that. Makes no sense. Okay, now. Now, notice I'm doing. Uh, here we go again. I come from the upright bass, right? and uh, I'm a classical player originally, and um, the string players use a vibrato. Uh, now I see a lot of um, a lot of guitar players, uh, rock guitars, and, and uh, people like even Billy Sheen uh, on bass. Uh, they'll go this way, um, but I, I don't do that. I'm not into that kind of sound. Uh, I'm giving it a little juice, and it, it gives it a little more sustain, a little sweetness. That's just what I do, and um, it be, it's more it's a transfer from uh, a double bass or a cello. Or if you could picture the violin and viola the other way, uh, and also classical guitar players will do this with their okay. So I'm not gonna see. Let's keep going here. Now, what's happening? The chords. The chords are A, G. That's all it is. Now again, if you want to be cheap and um, not really learn anything, you can do you can open G, which it, it, it sounds totally different than. So again, try to keep away from the open strings when possible. Um, if anything else, you'll start to see patterns. And if you learn this song, you can take if you learn the patterns correctly. You can take what you've learned in this song, and let's say the next song is in the key of D that you want to learn. All you gotta do is move up a whole step, and there's every, there it is. Every, every exactly everything. You take the, you start playing with open strings, you get all confused. And the other thing you do is you go up the neck. As you go up the neck, you'll get more of a punchy sound. Let's see now. Watch this. As opposed to. So let's go back to the tune. See how I'm playing along short? Now they're going to add the banjo here. See what I'm doing? Keeping it long, short, I'm just playing one note. I'm just going to imitate her there. Now long. Now, why did I go to the open string? Because it's going to have a nice long, in this case, I'm not going anywhere. And it's it's got an it's it's the more string um, is ringing than 
it's more punchy here, but it's it's more there. Uh, it, it just rings longer. All right. I'm not interested in parroting what uh, John Smith did on his bass. Um, you know, November twenty first, uh, nineteen eighty nine. I don't know. It's not. That's not the idea. You can learn that, and you'll learn what the guy did. Yes, um, and you can apply it to your own style. But um, if you have a style, hopefully, if you're watching this video, you already have some kind of vocabulary. Well, add to it. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to parrot somebody. This is learn something by rote. Now, back to the chorus. Active. See my other hand? Now, here's a little, the little bridge. Here's the little bridge. It only happens once. Okay. The other thing I'm doing is... I'll, I'll think a slide. It's not a, I don't, I'm not into fretless. That's not the idea. I do a lot of sliding from notes. Um, so, let's, that was the little bridge, the, the, uh, the little shot glass, all right? And uh, it, it's, it just sort of like breaks the back and forth, the tennis match, you know, the volley back and forth, back and forth by, by putting something a little new in it, all right? So. Now we're back to the bridge. Now this is what I do here. I play fifths. Just let the G ring. Short. Now long. It's like downshifting. I'll show you why I do this. In general, uh, being a classical musician, I, I, I sort of um, understand how Beethoven, Mozart, Brahms, Bach, uh, not so much of the Baroque, but more into the classical period, how composers save the best for last. Um, we've been doing this a lot now. At the end of the, as the song goes and goes, see, so it sounds a lot fuller, it sounds more dramatic, it's like we're going out now, this is it. When you take things down an octave, and a lot of bass players don't like, to, they don't consider, oh, I gotta think about all these strings, and then going down uh, below your sort of central note, um, at the end, it gives it, you, you want to worry about drama, you don't want to do, you don't want to like show everything off the first verse. Remember, there's, this is going to happen three times, usually, in, in a tune, three or four times. And if you blow your wad, um, the first verse, what are you going to do for the rest of the song? How are you going to build it? If you listen to a really good song, the lyrics will, um, will build and develop and take you to a certain place. And you want to, as, as a musician, you want to take this whole, these three elements of this song and, and develop and uh, end in a dramatic way along with it. Um, that's why oftentimes fade outs are kind of like, um, how do you finally end the song? Fade outs are kind of like, mm, you know, try to do it live. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, well, 
finding a coda, finding an end, uh, putting a period is uh, a skill in itself. So. Now out. Let's see now. No, don't want to do that. But, all right, we're going to set up. So let's do the whole song without me stopping, all right? Couple things. Get your scales down. The Bicky is a very strange thing. It's not like working on your biceps or, or your body core or something like that. It's a very sensitive thing. If you feel burning, stop, okay? You're making your body do something it's never done before, perhaps. You can really hurt yourself. Don't, all right? Um, watch. Watch me as I, uh, I'm gonna pick the C. I'm just gonna play, just, now watch, I'm gonna play it short. It's a huge difference. All right, uh, that's the other thing I'm gonna worry about. Think of the form, the architecture, the rooms. Well, rooms isn't really, it's more architecture than rooms because, um, uh, th just think of how long the song is. Um, this is an Inagata de Vida, 17 minutes long. That's a totally different kind of form, different type of architecture. So uh, watch what I'm doing. Um, listen to the sound that I have. It's my sound. It's what I want. Don't try to imitate someone like you're a parent. Um, get a nice instrument that you want. Uh, get an amp that you want. Um, and uh, and the other thing is, my bass is sitting on my lap. Notice I'm not even using my strap. These, the 1980s, even today, the heavy metal bass players, uh, well, that's very nice. You know, they get the bass down by their knee. Uh, I mean, it looks great and, and, and everything else, And um, but we're talking strictly music. You're cutting yourself. Why would you live in a, a seven-room house and, and only... Uh, it, uh, you know, condemn yourself to using three rooms uh, and not even use the other four. Uh, it, it'd be for show, you know. You want the base where it's going to be comfortable. I have my strap set up. Let's be honest, when, when we practice, we practice sitting down most of the time. Uh, you know, when you're in a band, uh, all of a sudden, and you're playing in, in, uh, in front of a bunch of drunks in a bar somewhere, uh, having fun and partying, all of a sudden, if, 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 if you find you're not pulling off what you can do at home, consider is your base in the same position as it was when you were home sitting down? All of a sudden you're standing up, you know, which is a physical thing, you know, I mean, it's like, well, it's kind of weird. Um, and then um, if your strap isn't adjusted while you're standing up in front of all these people, adoring people, um, then um, as it is, it should be at the same height, the same place, the strap should just be keeping things kosher, all right? Uh, so, uh, a lot to throw in there, and I'd love to hear your comments. Um, and let's hear this Dixie Chicks tune now, and I won't bother you anymore. Except with my playing. I'm going to turn the bass up just a little bit. This is kind of a, it's really the first head, but there's, um, it's kind of, um, an introductory to it. Nothing's rocking yet. No bridge yet. Okay, now we're going to play. My juice, my vibrato. Just give it a sweetness to it. Let's do it one more time. And we're going to go right to the bridge now.
the banjo. Just stay there. Keep it short. Now I like to imitate her here. Let go. Now the little bridge. fun.